Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to East Coast Online. We are so glad that you can watch from wherever you are. So why don't we worship together this morning? Let's worship God.
God will make a way. Let's sing this song with full faith. With full faith in the promises of God.
thank you, God, that your name is above every other name. It is above every other name. Lord, that you are counsellor, that you are deliverer, Lord, that you are all things. And this morning, you are making all things new, Lord. Thank you, God. Well, good morning and welcome to our very last only online service here at East Coast. And I'm joined with this incredible team who all of them don't enjoy being on this side of the camera. This is our behind the scenes panel. And I thought it would be a really nice way to bookend a season that has been so different and unusual for all of us. And without the people sitting here on this couch, you would have never, couches, um, you would never have been able to experience church online, such a high quality. We're so proud of our team. And it's actually by next Sunday, which will be our first service back in the building, we will have had 16 services online. And I don't know if you remember what that season was like, but we, in the week of March, well, our first live service was the 22nd of March, but the Tuesday before that, the 17th, we made the decision to go fully online, which just gave us barely a week to get ready. We bumped in this foyer, which we've loved. It's looked amazing. Uh, but that season was just every day information was changing. We even prepared to go live from my living room, which thank God we didn't have to, and Felix running the camera. So that would have been really interesting uh, season. But I thought, you know, this team worked in those first few weeks 24-7. And to bring what everyone needed, which was hope and peace into their living room. Now it's different, but I remember at that time just how we were all feeling and there was a real anxiety uh, running through the community. And I know in those first few weeks, many people jumped online and it was like a lifeline for them to have church in their living room. But before we get into that, I would just love these guys to introduce themselves, starting with Kieran, Kieran Moore. Um, and I was hoping that you would introduce yourself but also say because other than TJ who works full-time for us running kids church as well as many behind the scene uh, things but the rest of these guys have other jobs as well as what they do for church so take it away Kiki. Yeah well um, my name's Kieran. <laughs> I uh, So outside of church I do photography uh, mainly wedding photography and I guess in the first, yeah, first few weeks when all this was happening, a lot of weddings were postponed and that. So I didn't have too much work on that front. Um, yeah, so it kind of freed me up, which was good to be able to do a bit more here at church, um, to set up and get it all going. But um, yeah, and so here for for this setup that we've had going, myself and Aaron kind of put a lot of it, put a lot of it together, the live stream side and the sound side, but. Yeah, I've since kind of been doing the sound um, and doing pre-recordings for pastors that have come in or the podcast, things like that. And, yeah. And you also head up our worship team I do. as well. Yes. Yeah, so you navigated getting the team in here, pre-recording, all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, I guess at the beginning especially as well, we weren't sure whether we were going to have church fully shut down and weren't going to be able to be here at all. So... We did pre-record a few worship sessions and some uh, some preaching as well to be able to stream if we weren't able to come. Yeah. 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 Tashi? Well, I'm Tash. Um, yeah, so I guess here I do social media. Um, but outside of here I run a before and after school care at a school in the Shire. I'm not sure if it's a thing to say where it is, so I'm not going to. Um, <laughs> PM me later. No. Nah. Um, <laughs> uh, but as well as that, I also do photos. Um, yeah, and I guess for me, I do predominantly birth photography. So, yeah, that kind of also shut down pretty quickly. Um, but, yeah, that's what – that's me. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm Aaron. Um, you've probably seen me around church, you know, running a lot of sound and the live stream and that sort of thing. And I guess outside of church, I work for a bank now, um, doing a lot of their live events and working with um, 
meeting room technology and all of that sort of networking kind of kind of stuff, which is fun. And we're so blessed because yourself and Kieran have both had a lot of experience working for an incredible live stream company called Go Live. We'll just give them a little plug <laughs> there. <laughs> Shout out to Go Live. And that yep. really helped in this season, particularly that you've had that as a main employment for yourself. For sure. And we were, we were very blessed to have, yeah, that talent here, Kieran and Jay as well, um, where we've worked in that for a long time. And the church has been live streaming for four years now so we're in a really good position to jump into this into the foyer and do it do it properly with the whole church watching yeah yeah uh, i'm jay uh you may know me as a lego batman from our christmas production a few years ago um if you don't know me there i'm often behind the uh coffee machine um but during covid i've been um handling all the the live stream um so a lot of those mistakes that you've seen, they're probably from me. Um, but besides that, outside of uh, church life, um, I'm a 3D animator or I work in visual effects um, and currently working on a kids TV show uh, for the ABC, which is fully 3D with uh, fun characters and yeah, it's cool. That's awesome. And you also have done what they would have seen, the incredible graphics with our news that was put together. So you've worked with Tash with Church News for a number uh, of years. I don't know. I'm like timelining it. Me and Aaron did it for and two years Aaron, and now me and Tash have been for a year. Yeah, yeah. And then coming online, you put together what was completely visual Church News, which has just been such a blessing to have those gifts not gifts, but gifts. <laughs> <laughs> but also gifts. Yes, also gifts, yes. My name is Tari Jade, but many of you probably know me um, more commonly as TJ or Tej, and I run the kids' ministry here at East Coast, but have been doing a bit more like graphics and, um, yeah, video content, which I also love doing during this time. Yeah, and editing together the Mother's Day video and things like that. And what's been beautiful is the decal behind here is all Teja's work as well, which we've just loved being able to showcase that on our live stream. So I'd love, I'm saying love a lot, to, for you guys to share what were those first few weeks like? It was pretty intense, pretty stressful from our end but what about being in that position of of being live and often we'll get text messages from people in church it's gone black this is happening what's happening there um and that's like the the fun of I guess broadcasting church live and not pre-recorded but what was that like maybe for you personally and things going on in your own world yeah, I guess to start, um, it was like while it was quite a scary time and a lot of us didn't know what to expect, like a lot of us just we didn't know how bad it was going to get. Um, and that was quite scary. But honestly, there was also this atmosphere of like excitement and expectation for what God was going to do during this season that we'd never been through before. And yeah, I guess like I can really remember that the atmosphere of just like what's going to happen. And it was exciting to do something new and do, do something different. Yeah. Yeah, I guess just to like expand on that, I guess like um, this team was kind of properly formed um, during COVID, which was really cool. Because um, before, as I've said this before, we were kind of all just kind of communicating one on one with each other. We all kind of had like these different communication threads. Um, so it was nice to, um, that I guess, you know, one of these silver lines from COVID was that it allowed us to kind of come together and actually fully form this team. Yeah, which has become a strength and we have a name for for our team, which is Crandos, Creative Randoms. Um, and, yeah, that's been incredible because we instantly, after the team was established, became stronger and you could just see what we were able to output in those few weeks was um, clearer and I just think the quality just kept going up because of our great communication, great and increasing. Um, yeah. So I get, yeah, those first few weeks were probably pretty scary in my personal life because I was transitioning out of one job and then I was waiting on this other one to kind of be confirmed um, and it was like lots of question marks whether, you know, that was going to go ahead during COVID and all that sort of thing. But, but you know, by the grace of God, I had one week off in between the two jobs um, and in that week was the exact week that we were setting up this area and I was able to be here and deal with all that chaos of moving everything from the auditorium into the into the foyer and the youth hall to set up our new studio um, and to get, yeah, that first live stream 
we had the whole church watching online and it went went mostly seamless, I think. Um, yeah. I think so. And one of the things I've loved by talking to other pastors in their journeys is seeing where God has provided. And I think even just that window of having you when you weren't working and just being here and hands on, that was just the provision of God in that season. And these are just lots of stories people wouldn't know where God just gave us a bit of extra help when we really needed it. And it's a blessing. Sure. Yeah, so I think for me at the beginning, I was actually quite naive. Like I found... I was kind of, yeah, one wondering and getting quite upset and fearful of isolation and, you know, being alone. Like my housemate went to be with her family and so it, it actually was quite scary at the beginning for me and um, even at work, so at school, it went to just essential workers at home and then dealing with, you know, teachers, how they feel, um, how parents are feeling going through, you know, such a you know, quite an upsetting time for most people um, and the kids. And then with photography even, it just hit home with the births and not being able to. And I just remember getting to a point of like wondering, oh, okay, God, will I be, a- will I be able to pay for anything? Um, will I have to worry about my finances? Um, and I just remember God being... Yeah, just giving me a revelation of him being the provider and not, you know, we work um, and we earn money and we pay things with that money, but he's actually the one who provides for us, not our jobs. Um, And I just found peace in that and just laying that down. Um, So that was huge. And then, yeah, just here, just learning. It was a huge stretch for me. Personally, I think um, I saw insecurity. I saw comparison. Um very quickly but was able to deal with that and learn and just humble myself and yeah just really learn off everyone and I guess put things out that maybe I wouldn't have before so. Well it's been one of those seasons where everyone's had to expand their skill set and really for Tash doing social media and then expanding into more graphics which has been something that Tej has supported you in but with TJ producing all of the kids programs and just having to stretch yourself and try new things but the fruit of that is we've had other churches ask to use our content you've been acknowledged you know within the ACC like reposted and things like that so yeah it's been really fruitful to try something new and to grow yeah yeah Yeah. and just yeah being able to be uncomfortable and God can do things in the uncomfortable as well so yeah yeah Yeah, um during the start of this period I think well yeah it was like Lou was saying it was a big kind of rush we had a sort of a few days to get everything sort of set up in here so I was um yeah, I was pretty pretty busy just kind of doing that with Aaron. I was very grateful Aaron was off because he's the, he's the live stream guru. Um, out of the two of us, he knows what's going on. So that was good. And, yeah, so I got all the sound and everything set up. But I thought it was good. And from the pastors as well, there was a lot of freedom. There wasn't like, all right, we want it to like this, this or this. So there was freedom with how we, I don't know, set it up and got it working. So, yeah, it was good. Yeah, I love that. And the creativity in this team is incredible. And so just what they would bring and the ideas and we just, yeah, we would love it and see new things. And that was really exciting to be able to release everybody in that. And like what you said, fun. There was lots of fun and adrenaline rush in amongst potential fear and anxiety running side by side. Um, While Kieran has the microphone, uh, I want to move on to maybe just some highlights, like great memories, you know, funny moments. I, like for me, one of my favourites was I like was just up there waiting for the queue to, for it to start and then the band just all started chattering and I was told we were on live <laughs> and I had to turn around and be like, guys, we're live. <laughs> and that was one of my favourite moments. But what was yours, Kieran? Uh, <laughs> my favourite moment. Oh, there was lots of lots of sort of funny stuff that happened, especially behind the scenes. Um, it's been it's been good fun, but I think one of them the other week I think we were filming, and I kind of told Craig, I'm like, hey Craig, can you just because uh, Lou, we went on a tight shot, and we we're going back to the band after, so I just wanted Craig to go and grab the little 
the little stool and kind of pull it back and it wouldn't have been seen or anything. I'm like, all right, go, Craig, go. And he's just run and gone straight across instead. And you see his, like his whole back and his head just boop, 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 running, a, <laughs> running across in front of Lou, I think. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Um, probably definitely when Kieran was checking the microphones on live. But I think too, um, the bigger... I, yeah, I was trying to think of something super funny, but one of the biggest standouts of this season for me is um, you and Felix actually um, coming and just seeing us and f- as a team and actually as individuals um, and releasing us into things. Um but also just in the chaos of everything that senior pastors have to deal with, um, over task every week, at least once you called and you checked up as, on us as people over task. And I just think in this season that really stood out for me that, yes, we all had so much to do. But, um, yeah, you guys, your leadership over us, um, that really stood out for me. So, yeah. I don't know if I have a specific moment, but I think just how every week this entire team has just come on a Sunday and just dealt with the problems that we've had come up and just gone head fast into that. Um, and every week we've had a, a fresh stream. We've got a, a nice sounding stream now by solving a lot of those early problems. Um, and, you know, we've got lyrics on the, the live stream now. So a lot of new things have been birthed out of this and we just solve those problems, you know, kind of one at a time. And it's been really cool, yeah, being a part of that. Yeah, it's um, it, it's it's definitely fun looking back on um, how challenging every week has been. Like, this has always been different issues with the live stream, whether that's yeah, like YouTube, like deciding to go early, or a camera deciding it's going to be blue now, and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so, and really stressful at the time, and like the adrenaline's there, and you feel so anxious, but. Um, it's it's fun thinking back on every week of all these different challenges that we faced and then having to fix them and and now we've got a great collection of stories between you know Kieran checking the microphone and and Craig you know doo -doo -doo around the uh, <laughs> around the stage so um, yeah it's been a really fun experience. For me, I was thinking about what my favourite service was across these I guess sixteen weeks that we've been fully online. And I got to be involved in the Mother's Day service and the setup for that, which Kate McNamara did an incredible job, like putting the flowers together. And yeah, she's just amazing. Um, so yeah, shout out to Kate. And um, but then even just what you guys shared about and that being like a really natural conversation. Um, and I guess I really took a lot from that because I guess as creatives, we often are always doing something behind the scenes and can often get caught up in like what we do for God is like what like why he values us and it was just you know actually no like he values us like even before we've done anything and he loves us even before we've done anything and I think that was a really like big revelation yeah so that was great yeah that's so cool Tej and just probably leads into my next question really nicely so thank you is what is it like serving God in these kind of ministries because lots of people serve maybe on the door or in a hospitality way, um, maybe altar ministry where you're praying for people, those that will serve on stage in the worship team. It's a different way to serve God and often being behind the scenes, you can feel even removed from the action that's happening. But what's significant about this ministry is you are connecting people to God and it's super powerful and more people have had access to the Spirit of God because of what you've done. Um, whether it's even an image and someone looks at it on social media and then they click on the service. So maybe you can share what it's like to serve in a behind the scenes ministry and where your heart is to God and to go those above and beyond. People don't understand it's the min it's the team that's there first and last, you know, and does a lot of work. What you would have no idea is a pre-recorded service, the time that it takes to record worship, record the sermon, edit it together, do all the sound. Like that was a day plus uh, world, the day of recording. So it's like two, three days worth of work for an hour service. So I'd love to just hear your hearts behind serving in that in that capacity. Yeah, for sure. I think all of us here prefer being behind the camera and it's a hard, it's quite hard to actually sit in front of the camera and talk. I think 
like for me personally, I love that I can do what I do and that releases you and Rick and the rest of the, you know, pastoral team to do what they what they're gifted to do and what God God has called them to do in front of the camera and up on stage and like I love that I get to do that that releases you um but I also I guess I also really love that everything we do creatively is worship to God and yeah that we do it well um not to gain his love or acceptance but just to yeah to honor him and to worship him yeah I think you know, being behind the scenes, like there's a lot of creativity and, um, you know, when I think of God, I just think of how creative God is, you know, whether that's like waking up early and looking at like a, a sunrise and and just seeing like the beauty of God's creation and and being creative and being able to create stuff of my own that makes me feel close to God. And, and you know, like it's just quite powerful to me and I feel so connected with God when I'm using my gifts that he's given me and to, to, you know, um, like grow the kingdom of God and, and just, yeah, just, to I don't know. It's, it's quite interesting just being able to, it's such a different medium, I guess. Um, so yeah. And I love that, you know, we're such a small team and we get to be able to collaborate and just make people feel things, you know, whether that is like a video they put together and, and make people just, um, you know, and that's where well, that's just like a visual medium to represent um, the worship and it just really moves people and, and makes people connect with God in such a different way. And yeah, I think it's really powerful. Yeah, I think we're a, a team of details and often those details are very, very small and we're adjusting things that not a single person will even notice. But that's almost the point of the behind the scenes crew and a lot of the stuff we do in the studio and the sound desk is so people don't notice what we're doing and we're able to remove all of the distraction so that when you're watching the live stream you're not noticing things in the background or cameras being out of focus and things like that and you're able to just focus in entirely on the message that we're trying to deliver um yeah yeah that's so cool um I guess for me I totally second I love just being like behind <laughs> behind the scenes like <laughs> it's so good um but like a couple of things like I love coming into this team and I've indiv- like I've individually I've learned from every individual in this team so much like every not everything I know but a lot of the stuff I know t- especially like technically even um with photography like I've learned off Aaron and Kieran that's helped me outside of church um so I just I love that you know we can always learn from each other and we have that culture to teach as well um but also yeah just how God's designed us uniquely and we uniquely see different things and we'll get things that are different say from a sermon or we'll see things creatively different and I love that what we see we can collaborate that as well um but yeah just how God's made us to be yeah, a creative being and creative doesn't have to be what you think it is either. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> a, lot of it's, a lot of it's already kind of been said. Um, it's always rough being at the end, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> I know. So, yeah, like what Aaron says, um, sort of especially as well, just because I'm a bit more, I guess, uh, technical on the – on the sound team and that, so all the, the little things, just trying to minimise distractions and trying to make, yeah, trying to make things as, uh, do things as well as we can, whether it's, you know, for the worship team or sound team, live stream, whatever it is, just if everybody, you know, doing their job to the best of their ability, it I don't know, makes it a bit more, a bit more seamless and I kind of think if you're going to do anything, do it as good as you can, so, yeah. It's awesome. And I just want to say Felix and I are so proud and thankful for everything that you've given, particularly in this season and just gone above and beyond and done things that no one 
we'll see, even we didn't see, but God knows and he'll always honour what you've sown into his kingdom and expanding his kingdom. And so if you see them when you're back at church, say thank you, don't hug them because that's not appropriate. Um, But yeah, just say thank you so much for all that they've done. I thought it was a nice way to honour these guys. And the future is really exciting in this church. We are going to see this creative team raise up a whole new generation. I'm just believing for young people to come alongside, learn photography, learning live stream, having a space where uh, sound engineers can learn their training in church and go out into the world and take their gifts uh, and share it with people. And so watch this space. I just think the next 12 months is going to be really exciting as this team continues to grow and what we're Uh, outputting and we'll continue to do live streaming and offer that service for you guys now at a new new time of 10 30 mark it in your diary if you watch at home but I can't give them a round of applause because you can't but thank you guys (laughs) bless you Well, guys, I hope you've really enjoyed getting to hear from this amazing team, many of them who you haven't heard from before. I know I've been blessed being able to honour them. We're now going to throw into another panel. This is our behind the scenes pastoral panel and I'd like to bring them on now. Well, welcome to our new panel, Repeat of TJ, uh, who does amazing things and We know that church isn't just about the Sunday sermon going out and live streaming the content that we would have in the building, but we're a community church and we wanted to make sure our pastoral care and what we did taking care of people in this season, serving people was still a high priority. So we had one part of the team looking at live stream, all our online content, which is the team you saw, but then these guys represent just a portion of the army that it took to take care of the the church and so Suresh is here but Madhu also works so hard uh, behind the scenes doing connect groups and we also have Craig but representing Loretta too um, and others that aren't here Shane did an incredible job taking youth on the line and all of the youth content that went out connecting with the young people Linda Hamilton with Playgroup, bringing Playgroup online and doing online content for that community as well. Gail Cavaris doing Coast Care and a whole sea of people. We had our whole church mobilised. I can't list every number of people that were calling people, doing deliveries, just the amazing things that happened. I was just constantly getting reports of things that people were doing out of love, not that they even needed permission for it, just the church was mobilised, which was so exciting. But one thing that people may not know is Rick really had to step into pastoral care and you carried that because that was one thing that Felix and I, uh, our pastoral hearts were heavy for people and we just didn't want one person who wasn't in a connect group to be missed out and just without having that face-to-face experience of a Sunday where you can see people and say oh I wonder if they're okay and we touch base with them that was taken away and we just thought we can't rely on people reaching out to us we need to be reaching out to them. Rick can you tell us what that was like mobilizing pastoral care in a season where you couldn't physically visit people? It was challenging there was many different challenges to it but I'll forever remember the meeting that we had in this very foyer when we were Uh, talking about our plans, what we were going to do next. And it went from just a few weeks earlier uh, with Pastor Felix saying, we want you to take care of the seniors. And so, okay, I'm getting my head around taking care of the seniors. And then fast forward two weeks, then he says in this room, okay, it's not just seniors now, it's pastoral care for the whole church. I'm like, okay, back to the drawing board. And I, I remember I actually wrote that down in my notebook and started to think about how, how do we do this? How do we do this in this challenging season? And immediately we knew that it can't fall on one person's shoulders. Being a community church, we had to engage the community to be the community. We couldn't just say it is one person's job to look after everyone. That's not how it works. And we know that from the Bible, that's not how it works. And that's not how this team works. We we share each other's burdens with that. And then we have one person that may be carrying the, the, the major load of it, but everyone understands the importance of, of community 
of knowing what's going on inside people's lives. And when you can't do that with the simple conversations that you would normally have on a Sunday, just, just walking through the foyer and saying, how are you? And just seeing someone's face, you can pick up so much about what's going on with them. If they're, if they're bright and happy and, or if they're downcast. And so we had to change the way that we were going to connect with people. The connect groups had to diversify. The way that we would connect with people that weren't in a connect group had to diversify. And we rediscovered the importance of a phone call mm. and how important a phone call is. And that's actually been one of my highlights. And I've said it many times, the amount of great phone conversations that I had with people. And what I really enjoyed too was when I would speak to someone and say, please let me know. Please let me know what's going on. If anything changes, please let me know. And people would take up that invitation because that's a privilege to us when they want to share what's going on in their life. And I had wonderful conversations with people, people that I have never had a conversation with in person. They were names on a page for me initially, but then you speak to someone, you see what's going on in their lives, in their family's lives, and you discover you can do a whole lot with your words. And you can encourage people with your words. You can encourage people with a text as well. And it was wonderful to hear that it wasn't just, it wasn't just me by any stretch of the imagination, it was the church that was mobilised, caring for one another. And particularly within the seniors, it is very inspiring how the seniors look after one another. They, they understand the importance of it. They know if they're going through a rough time, they can't do it on their own. And they need the community there. And that is one of the, the main things I'm going to take away from this whole period is looking at the, the stalwarts of faith, you know, the people that have been there, done that, and how they go through crisis, and they're so faithful. And that's going to be uh, one of the, the great things to take away from this is how we can do community and knowing that we can, we can ch face challenges like this when we do things like community right. And that was one of the hard things really was not us being able to visit people and pray for them and especially difficult. with Ron being so unwell that was mm. a that was a big blow for a lot of us not being able to be with him Absolutely. and see him before Absolutely. he passed yeah, yeah the closest to God is to the 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 front doors of Sutherland Hospital that's the closest yeah. that we got and understandably so and we, we, we're completely understanding of that situation but again the phone call the last conversation that I had with him was he was bright, he was cheery. And one thing that he always, funny thing with me and him is that he used to always call me Peter. Don't know where it came from, but he would seem to always call me Peter first. And he's like, oh, Peter, I said, oh, Rick. And it's like, you know, we had that joke still intact and it was just lovely to hear his voice. He, he, he his conversation was clear. I, he understood me, I understood him. And that was a great memory that I'm going to have and like I said simple phone call mm -hmm. so it's really important that we understand that you know though we mightn't be able to see someone a phone call is really important though it is difficult you know being a church that we we like to go see people we like to lay our hands on people we like to anoint people we want to pray for them and not being able to do that raises a challenge but you know God is here we don't need to lay our hands on anyone to see the sick recover we, we know that we can pray. We can pray for someone over the phone and see the miraculous happen. And that's what we will continue to believe for moving forward. Yeah. But for us, one of the things that was an absolute standout for this season was this drop of kindness campaign that Craig Nichols ended up heading up. And this word kindness is so vital. And the response to people who received it, I personally got to experience firsthand with delivering some of them. And I'd like to pass over to Craig now to talk about his experience with all that. So, Craig? Yeah, thanks, Rick. Um, I mean, firstly, um, just just being given the privilege to um, um, from yourself and, and Lou and Felix to give me the responsibility of it was just such a blessing and um, and I don't take it lightly and um, it was it was just a, such a wonderful time to just um, I guess like we, we sometimes make church very insular like we we concentrate on what we do within these four walls and the outside of here can kind of get forgotten and I think that this season really gave us a chance to go beyond what we 
normally do within the four wall space and I, and I think for me it was uh, a real eye opener that you know we don't have to do a lot we, we, we can just do something really simple and it can just have such an impact in people's lives and, um, and I, I can think of a couple of examples of people who were just completely blown away that why are you doing this you know like they couldn't actually understand um, that something so simple um, you know, had such a massive impact on them. And I think that for me, I re- just being able to see that firsthand was, was really special. Um, so, and I think that, you know, it's important to say that I'm not more qualified at doing this than anyone else. You know, this is, um, this is what our heart is at the at church level, you know. And, and I think that, um, you know, just being able to be a part of that was just really special. Yeah. Yeah, and we were blown away with how quickly uh, the church gave and they were so generous. So we were able to not only when we first started giving out bread and we were giving out basic things that we could around Easter and then it shifted to the grocery box that we did. But when we made the call out, who can give, just instantly the funds came in and we were just so inspired by the church's generosity as well. Yeah, totally. I mean, like that that can't be underestimated by any stretch. It was um, you know, without the the community of God getting behind it, um, I mean, we can have all the best plans in the world, but if um people aren't behind it, then it it um, you know, very hard to go anywhere. So yeah, seeing the generosity of people and like you said, Lou, in such a quick succession was was really was really awesome as well. Yeah, cool. Thank you, Craig, for everything that you did. And Craig works another job. He's not here at church full time or anything. So just the generosity of you to do those after hours above and beyond making the phone calls, making things happen. We just really honour you. And we know that those things don't go unseen. Like I said, with the other team, God sees every single moment that you put into his kingdom. And I just believe he'll bless you and your family. So thank you. Thanks, Lou. Now, Suresh. Suresh and Madhu head up our connect groups very closely with myself and Felix and Rick. And I honoured many people at the beginning of the service. I didn't honour Felix. And my goodness, Felix has worked his heart and soul, blood, sweat and tears in this season. He just carries so much um, with me and we do it together. And we just, yeah, we love Pastor Felix and all that he brings to the team. And many phone calls, late night Zoom calls, I recall, between like Rick, Madhu and Suresh and myself and Felix talking about connect groups and if you've been a part of the church for any length of time you know that it is the heart and soul of the church our heart is to have people discipled and grown in small Christian community we believe that that is what it's about not just a Sunday service but where you are known known by somebody and people know you and Suresh tell us about what it was like taking all of our connect groups online and even what some of the fruit and result of that was. Yeah, um, like for Madhu and I, um, even during just looking back at that particular time of our lives, like work was really busy in the sense like everybody in the corporate world were figuring out how things are done. Um, like for people who don't like, I've, I work for an IT firm who supports a bank. Uh, and the demand for getting everything online, people working, um, like the people working were like from 1,500 to 22,000. So the, the work behind it was very stressful and we were working like 12 to 14 hours a day just to get the corporate stuff. Um, and then um, on, on, on the church front, um, having to go online with Connect Group was a completely new field. We have never done it before. Um, so it was it was just thinking about it and asking God's help and favor and wisdom on it is to how do we get um, people online and still feel connected. So that was a challenge. That was our first challenge to say, how do we p- make people feel connected and still open up and be intimate on video, um, which is hard for some people. And um, the other side of it, um, the initial challenges was the technical side of it, is I remember spending late nights just testing different software. Um, in the corporate world, you have paid software, but we have a demographic of young people and connect group leaders from young um, to our seniors, and we had to find something that would match in 
somewhere fall in between, uh, which is easy for them to do. Uh, and then remember doing um, documents and step-by-step -step, uh, documents that we can empower our leaders to get online. Um, so that was where our initial challenges were. Um, apart from that, like what uh, Rick shared, there was so much of um, people wanting to join um, um, online C groups because like, uh, like Lou said, we wanted people to be connected. And um, I, I remember uh, in this meeting, Felix saying that he, he was the, during the COVID restrictions, I think even as it started, um, uh, our senior pastors, Lou and Felix's focus was everybody be connected, everybody be called. There should no one fall through the gaps. So that was basically our, our, our drive, um, our intention of getting everybody online. Um, and there was, uh, we were, one of the, I mean, the wins is that um, we, there was so much of interest. We had people wanting to join connect groups. The other side of the coin is the challenge of raising up new leaders. Because as you would know, on a video front, more than five to six people, uh, it becomes, it's not very intimate, let me put it that way. <laughs> so um, we had to, there was a purpose and there was a requirement. We had to raise new leaders um, and we had to start new connect groups, um, all with COVID restrictions. Um, and we did it. So I, I'm really thankful for, for Rick, um, for Pastor Lou and um, Felix, the late nights trying to get the kids in bed by eight o'clock, the challenges of that. And then we would stay up like for about two, two and a half hours discussing connect groups and the wisdom and the support uh, from our senior pastors were really awesome. So um, in terms of wins, as a church, I think um, more people joining connect groups and being connected was such a massive win for us um, as a church, I would say. Yeah, and even we were able to start a Pastors Connect group, which we could just couldn't have done with all of our little kids having all of us in it. But it's funny, you think, why didn't we think of this before? But like COVID just showed us that Connect Group Online can be really powerful and having that space to share your hearts and more people were able to engage with Connect Groups than before. And I think it's given us uh, forward thinking for the future. If someone is housebound, if you can never leave your home for whatever reason, you can still be in a connect group community. Or if you move overseas and you like, you know, love your connect group, just being able to phone in and things like that. It's just blown the world of small group community. I think prepared us for the future. Yes. Uh, so this will, I think, season has only strengthened and probably increased our connect groups, which would never have happened in the same way if life had just chugged on yep. before. So yeah, we thank you for everything that both you and Madhu, with Declan having such a severe accident, like in the lead up to this, you guys have had a lot going on personally, yeah. but you just serve people just with the heart of God and we're so thankful. Yeah, thank you. I would, I, I mean, just to mention, I would really like to thank our Connect Group carers and our Connect Group yeah. leaders because they just took, when we spoke to them as to what we were trying to do and shared your heart and focus of um, uh, reaching out to people who were already in C groups, uh, already in Connect Groups, and to reach out to new people. There was so much of support from our carers and who are also doing full-time jobs and you know so it's it's uh it's a team effort of everybody so i would really be very proud of them and really like to thank them um for supporting us during this season so good suresh absolutely thank you we're gonna chuck to tj now um tj on a sunday we've generally before church went online we would have on a normal Sunday, 70 out in kids church, including the leaders. And it's a huge ministry. But on top of that, you have a team of nearly 70 leaders that you communicate with, do rosters for, provide material and training for them. We have a very high standard working within safer churches and just TJ does an incredible job 
with our children's ministry, which is one of the most uh, growing ministries in the church. So we came to a point of being fully online. And I can remember I shared in the panel before about the Tuesday, we made the decision to go online, that meeting that Rick was talking about. And then by that Sunday, TJ had made a haul and I did not expect this nor ask her to do this because I just thought it was unrealistic, had made a website, had all the content for the very first online kids experience and just she jumped straight into a new gear of producing content for the kids. But your heart the whole way through it has not been just to produce content for them to engage with, but you have really had your heart for the parents, the leaders and the kids to connect with them. Can you share what that's been like? Well, I guess going into this season, I didn't want to make like all this content that was just really unrealistic and like expected a lot of parents who are already homeschooling, already working from home, Um, for them to have to carry that out and then do Sunday school or kids ministry at home with their kids. I didn't want it to be something that just put more pressure on them. So I tried to make it as simple as possible and really worked off um, like some conversations that I had with parents and what would be, yeah, like possible and attainable for them Um, and made like a three-step program that involved worship, a video and a small group that, yeah, was just quite simple for them to run at home. But I guess like while the content and, you know, the Bible stories and all of that is really important, what I thought would be more important going into this season of isolation would really be to try and connect the kids with each other for them to be able to see each other. Um, Like they aren't seeing their friends at school they're not able to see their friends at church so we did weekly challenges like YouTube challenges that I know the kids know and love to watch on YouTube and um yeah like that was that was our way to connect the kids with each other so they'd see each other in the YouTube challenges online um yeah and that was kind of like the the goal for that and I think it went really well like I'm it was really cool to see some of the kids come on board and what they were able to create was like you know like like Pearl Moore what an incredible YouTube YouTube presenter (laughs) seriously next minute she'll have a, a YouTube channel of her own um so yeah that was really cool to see how the kids engaged with it and the parents engaged with it as well Yeah, and just our kids love Kids Church. And I know when school opened up again, my daughter said, oh, like I'm seeing my school friends, but I really miss my church friends. And they value that community. And sometimes we think about our relationships at church and we come and see our friends, but we don't realise they're connecting with those friends once a week and they look forward to that. And I'm so excited that in one week's time that we can just bring them in and be able to just get them to experience that community of God again, which they've really even realised how much they value it. I know we've missed that experience, but the children really have too. And and that's nice that they're going to be able to step back into this space. Yeah, for sure. And what kind of happened all around the time of COVID on the 29th of March, our plan was to launch our junior youth program. And I know so many of our kids were so excited for that. It really is this untapped market where we have kids in year five and six who really feel like kids' church is a bit too young for them. And we have our year seven and eight kids who church is a big jump for them to um, yeah, be in the service. So we were in the workings of creating a, a program for them that was going to start on the 29th of March, which we obviously had to cancel. But going forward, we are in the workings of making that happen again again, and we're not quite sure when it's going to launch but for you kids out there I know that you're really excited for that know that it's going to happen and yeah we're really excited with how that's going to really partner with the um the youth program on a Friday night as well it's one again one of the awesome things that's come out of this is being able to to reinvent how we do things and and look at things completely differently if COVID hadn't happened we would do things the same but now this has forced us to change and it's forced us to find diamonds in the rough, so to speak. We've seen potential in so many different areas. And Tej and I have done work before on the whiteboard just looking at the demographic, the young people coming up and through, 
going, my goodness, this is the youth of the future. And just thinking, oh my gosh, you know, Hudson is going to be 10 in five years' time. So he's going to be in junior youth in five years. So now is the time to establish something for the future. And this is not just going to be for our Sundays. And this is the exciting thing is that there is a flow on with what's happening on a Sunday, with what's going to be happening on a Friday. And what we're going to be doing with a Friday is focusing in on these junior youth. We're going to be doing things which are suited for that age group. And we've had, we've had some people you know, sneak in under the radar when it comes to the age and they really want to be here and, we're there and it was like, oh, yeah, okay, but you see how much they love it, they, how much they love being here on a Friday. So we are going to go with that and we are going to make a, a, a special time for them. We're calling connection points. And there's going to be two different connection points. There's going to be connection points for the junior youth, but there's also going to be connection points for the older youth. And we are focusing in on relationship because, again, it's one of the things we have, we have discovered or rediscovered the importance of relationship, knowing what's going on inside people's lives, knowing what's going on at home and being there for them in the school life, uh, in, their, in their family life, in their sporting life, in their dancing life, all those different things. And we are focusing in on how we can do that better. And we are we're tossing around all sorts of different ideas. I don't want to give too much away, but it is going to look different. It is going to feel different. But I truly believe it is what God has called East Coast youth to do for the future. And I'm yeah. very excited about it's that. It's so exciting. And I think having that blank canvas and probably that stretching and creativity and we had our creative behind the scenes team on before but bringing that creativity of God and the Holy Spirit into our ministries and just having that fresh start and we in this church do amazing I think but I may be biased uh, events and we put on things like the Christmas production and and women's encounter and marriage courses and all of those things we do but this year has been a real stripping back and just the the bare bones and the bare essentials of what we're doing and the rest of the year that's what we're looking to do is focus on our connect groups and on our Sunday service the ministries that are running the children's church and the youth and doing that well with the fresh breath of the Holy Spirit of what this season has been able to give us that creativity and and a new start. I think we're coming into the most exciting season as a church and it's going to be a season of multiplication and growth for us and for you guys that are a part of it as well. And Felix and I feel so blessed to serve you as pastors because it's not just the people that are on this couch. It's all the volunteers that do an amazing job that carry a load and and we can't wait to be back with you really soon. But I thought you would like to hear a little bit of our, of our stories. We didn't get to share much about, you know, behind the scenes doing phone calls with kids at home and things like that, which were quite interesting and Skype calls and children flying in the background and, and screaming over the phone calls. But that is for another day. Um, I thought, why don't we pray? We'll close in prayer. And maybe you are new to the East Coast community and you're thinking, oh, maybe I'll come. When you open the doors, come. You'll love it. You're welcome to come. You're welcome to stay online forever. We'll still be here. But we'd love to have you a part of our community. Join a connect group if you've been thinking about it. Serve on a team. Uh, This next season is a great season to be a Christian, to be alive and to see the kingdom of God expand. So why don't we just pray as we and all the churches around Australia begin to open. I'm going to pray for all of us in the next couple of weeks. Father God, I thank you so much for your provision in this season, for the thought of the individual. You've always cared about the one. You know everybody by name. Lord, I pray for those that are at home and they're listening and they even wonder where they fit in your big picture. God, I thank you that you have called us all to be a part of the body and that not one part is more important than the other. So I pray for a sense of significance and purpose to come upon everybody right now. Father God, I 
thank you for every church that has been online, Lord, those that even have just been connecting with people, calling people every week that have rallied behind the communities where you've placed them. God, I pray for the transition coming back to live services, uh, opening their doors. I pray for the protection upon every church community. Lord God, we pray that this virus would end and that we would see the end of it, the end of social distancing, Lord God. We want everything that you're bringing new in this season, but there's things we want to leave behind. We want to leave the virus behind. We want to leave the, the restrictions behind, Lord God, and we want to step into all that you have called us to. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us and thank you for all you do to serve the Kingdom of God. And we'll see you in this space next week. Bless you. Bye.